Bobby Moore and this is Scott Thomas and we are East Tennessee on the rise. Today we are sitting down with Lauren and this time she brought the Howlers with us. Everybody introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Lauren Beeler. I'm Derek Bystead. I'm David Lee Russell. I'm Lee Brockhart. I swear I thought you were going to say Roth at the end of that. Mm. Yes. <laughs> That's who I was actually named after. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. So, how long have you guys been together as a band? Less than a year. <laughs> like, September, 10 months? October? Yeah. October? Uh, I'd say about eight, nine, ten months, yes. I kept uh, going to a local bar to see her play. Uh -huh. We were actually eating one night, sitting there, and my buddy ran over and said, there's this girl over there that's playing. She's amazing. you got to come see her. Like, okay, you know, I'll go over there. So we went over there, started to eat, grabbed a few brews, and sat down. She's like, oh, she is awesome. Okay. Kept going back to seeing her. and kept aggravating her. I was like, I played the drums. I played the drums. So you, we ought to get together sometime. And finally, after enough aggravation, she... About five times, yeah, and you just, yeah. like, stalking me at my show. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she invited me along, and been history ever since. Nice. He always he always had some type of alcohol on him whenever we met. So when I brought up to the fact, it was like, you play drums, right? Will you help me with this show? He was like, how do you know I play drums? <laughs> True story. It's like you told me like five times. Nice. Well, there's something to be said about short-term memory. Yeah. Well, it was in walking distance of my house too. So. There's some nights you just don't want to remember. So right, just exactly. Throw them back and you're good. It was a good time, so it, it really was. We had you guys on a, on a show a couple months back. It was really cool. It was my first time hearing you guys as a band. We heard Lauren the last time we had you on the show. You are great with your acoustic stuff. Thank you. We appreciate you coming back and bringing your whole crew. Thanks that means you didn't scare her off. Uh, apparently so. I didn't scare anybody off. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> so uh, how far have you guys been playing? Like, What's your outreach? Um, we got for the summer. We're doing a lot of stuff up in Kentucky. We got some stuff lined up in Lexington. Um, we got Asheville. Uh, pretty much that basic area, Knoxville. Am I correct? And you guys are from the Tri Cities, correct? Oh, we're from Tazewell. Tazewell. Okay. Is that close to the Tri Cities? Or is <laughs> it hour hour and a half? Yeah. It's prior. Yes. We're we're the Tri State, Tennessee, Tri -state. Kentucky, Tri -state. Virginia, yeah. literally. Yeah. Northeastern Tennessee in yeah. that region. We were like right on the Kentucky border. Oh, cool. So, just a hop, skip, and a hop on jump over, over yeah. to, to Kentucky to do any show you want. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what are your musical inspirations? Uh, for me, definitely uh, St. Vincent, um, Liz Fair, uh, Cranberries. I like a lot of 90s girl rock. Um, well, somebody touches his legs, we'll start talking or something. Here you go, David. <laughs> it's your cue. It's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. You know, just yawn down the line. Um, I mean, I've really got a broad range, but I like a lot of, like, the older punk and stuff. Um, like, Bad Religions, Ramones. Um, but it varies a lot. Yeah. I come from a little harder background. I kind of my influence is, of course, Led Zeppelin and John Bonham on the drums. Just an amazing drummer. Uh, recently, Blackstone Cherry. They're uh, they're pretty big right now. I got into them when they were just starting out. Um, uh, Metallica, Black Sabbath, uh, the '90s grunge, Audio Slave, just anything with a hard hit, good sound drum, just something raw. Is, gotcha. is what I come from I come primarily from a blues background so being put in the situation of like an alt rocky sort of vibe has been a, an interesting change so it's it sounds, like, sounds like a good mixture though I mean a wide variety of, yeah. yeah you guys kind of draw all of your musical uh, tastes and talents together to become Lauren the Howlers that's right. what we hope for and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're trying to you know, someone that wants to ask us, well, what uh, genre do y'all play? And I was like, uh, well, alternative, what, what else did we say? There's, there's normally a shrug and yeah. rock with a question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Usually either alternative or indie is the go-to, like, like, safe word. 
that like we can do to keep it indie simple. Indie if you're talking to an indie person. Yeah, <laughs> you have to fill out the person before you can say what it is. Doing these, we found that most bands don't want to pigeonhole themselves into one genre because you all come from different backgrounds and you want to put that out in your music, whether it be hard rock, I mean, indie, or whatever background you came from, you can put a little bit of that into your sound that you have right now. Yeah. And since we had you guys on the show a couple months back, and you were shredding the guitar, man. I, I was like, whoa. <laughs> He's good for that. <laughs> it was an awesome Don't show. It. It's funny you say backgrounds like that. I actually grew up playing gospel music and bluegrass. And actually, I can actually play a mandolin. I forgot I didn't about know that. that. You in the bluegrass phase. So I there you go. You that. can put a mandolin in your in your set. Can you smash it? Wow. <laughs> you just got ousted. <laughs> I, I, I can smash it like that. You're now hired as a mandolin man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta write some music hey, for that. Hey, Jimmy Page played that. Yeah. So uh, who primarily does the writing in the band? Literally, well, um, do you still draw your inspiration from yourself or music you've heard or experiences you've been through? Um, mostly just situations I've been in, um, particularly stressful situations. <laughs> That's usually where the best songs come from, though. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, those kind of lyrics just draw people in. When you're playing and singing, Turmoil. you want, <laughs> yeah, you want yeah. people to Inner relate turmoil. to what you're, what you're talking real. about, right? Yeah, it's, it's real. You don't want to talk about that political stuff, though. It's just... No. <laughs> sorry, we can't all sorry, be rage against the machine. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um... I don't know. I just... Yeah, just... <laughs> particular moments of extreme stress and being upset. That's usually where it comes so, from. So it's just your, your outlet to, yeah. to relieve your stress. It's my therapy. Okay. I'm hurting hurt with me, too. <laughs> you draw from more emotions than you do from outside the world as you see it. You draw from the emotion of whatever experiences you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, because some of the songs kind of have like a bit of a more like upbeat, like happier sound to them, but I kind of like the contrast of having depressing lyrics and then like, oh, here's a little happy guitar riff that we're going to throw in there. Just like kind of throw you off. Well, you got to drag people through the, the emotional gamut. Just keep on dragging <laughs> them like, come on. <laughs> Maybe I just need to like check my emotions a bit more. <laughs> no. It says something it's, deeper it, about me. It's therapeutic to, to write about what's, what's happened to you in your life or what you see in the world. So you can just put that out there as music instead of being like, uh, I'm so depressed. So just being in a shit mood all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way I think sometimes too. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, Bobby. <laughs> if I can't give you the if I can't give you the you can't give him to me, buddy. <laughs> he does it to me all the time, so I gotta give it back to him every once in a while. I, I did it to these two guys, and they just—they're kind of getting used to it now. But they're, they're still like, we'll be on stage, sitting up in front of a crowd, it's gathering, and I'll just kind of. <laughs> Quit that. I'm surprised. Not here. We gotta be professional. Yeah. <laughs> gotta be fun, if man. You just sniffed it after you got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's gone a little too far there. Oh, oh that's great. All right, have you guys got any upcoming shows? I mean, yeah. What's our next June show? Because we're going on a little bit of a break for until about June. Yeah, June, June 8th. 8th. We're actually First playing a show. benefit. Um, it's for the Masonic Lodge. My father is actually putting it on. It's at his business. It's uh, it's the shoe fund for children. Oh, it's cool. through the Masonic Lodge. It, it raises money for uh, kids who can't afford or their parents can't afford clothing, shoes, and it, it raises money and it's all donated toward them. So we love it, good causes. No, yeah. it, it is for good cause, and they ask, ask us to come down there and play for that. So. Oh, nice. It's outside venues, just laid back. Back what city where is I grew in? up in Speedwell. I'm sorry. What Speedwell. city is it in? Speedwell. 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 Where is that? I'm not it from Tennessee, is, so you have to give me a little bit of. If you will blink your eyes, <laughs> you will miss it. It's between La Follette and Harrogate, Tennessee. So it's between this stop sign and that yield sign? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Okay, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> it's just a straight shot down Highway 63. Okay, that's cool. So, do you guys have any albums out as a full band? We just finished the recording yes. on. Um, our first official album as a band because the last one it was just like a solo thing and then we ended up like, starting to get together like a week or two after it released yeah that's when we got together <laughs> <laughs> but um we just finished the one for um as a band together we are we're all on it playing our instruments and um it'll be out july 19th july 19th 
on all your online platforms <laughs> and whatnot mm -hmm. and so, hard copy. Okay, I'll be right ask that hard copy CD. You, well, you'll have those at your shows? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they'll be there. Anytime people come out to see you guys play, they'll, they'll be able to buy your yeah. merch, everything. Have their yeah. hard copy tangible in their hands. Mm -hmm. nice. Please do that and support your local musicians. Yes, local music is yes. the you. best <laughs> in this area. We've got some of the best musicians in the area. It's just great. It it's been picking up a lot, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we actually just got told. Uh, so we had Burning Yesterday, which is also front man for Killing Grace, but they're from Nashville, and mm -hmm. he was him, them and their manager. Like Knoxville is just really starting to compete with Nashville, you know, really? music-wise. He said we were just blowing up, and people those guys are wanting to, those guys yeah. wanting to come over here like yeah. crazy. That's like awesome. we want to explore this area. Yeah. That's awesome. So thanks to people like you and the rest of the local musicians, we're starting to get noticed. Well, you know, really thanks to people like you, because you guys like, <laughs> you guys <laughs> literally like tell way. other people yeah. about us. But, well, we can't do it without you guys, though. Well, thank it's, you. It's, I appreciate We that. are untalented hacks, <laughs> so. I couldn't play guitar at all. He's looking for, never mind. So. Hey, not nice. <laughs> hey, I just hit stuff. That's all I do. That's a stress relief. It's really that's that's kind of cathartic sort of thing. You can sit there and just bang well, away at the buddy. drums. That's, that's I would love the to best do that. Stress relief I've ever found. If I tried to play the drums, I'd be like, okay, I can't do with no, the other hand get at the same time. That's, <laughs> why, get that's why I mentioned Metallica, Black Sabbath. You got to really get into it. Yeah, you're not going God unless there's blood on the toms. No, I'm not going <laughs> to be here playing, you know, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's you're all over the drums, just like everywhere. Yeah, Lauren actually has to slow me down, <laughs> lock me up sometimes. Like pull back the reins a little yeah. bit, man. <laughs> you're a little out of control. It, it's, yeah. So Pantera covers are not happening, right? <laughs> no, we're not going to be playing walk anytime soon. <laughs> you can do Janice. She just broke his heart. Like yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll try to get my voice deep enough. Like, I'll smoke like a pack of cigarettes beforehand. And then well, maybe it can happen. I appreciate you uh, putting your health on the line. Yeah. <laughs> for my desire of yeah. hard music. Anything for you, David Lee. <laughs> well, you were talking about uh, being interested in the um, 80s and stuff like that for a female vocalist. Yeah. You can go even further back. Yeah, we into could do Janis Joplin. Mm -hmm. Pat Benatar. God, I love Pat Benatar. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys are. I kind of hate to admit this, but I was a big Pat Benatar fan whenever I was young. Get off the stage. Why do you hate to admit it? She's great. <laughs> but there was one specific song that I, for some reason, liked to listen to while I was doing homework as a little kid. The Flashdance, the the song from Flashdance. I forget what it, I know what it is. Like I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But like that's awesome. When she's dancing. <laughs> you're yeah. just like doing your math homework. Yeah. Right? Seriously. I don't know why. That's it why was, it gets you moving. It gets it, you going. It was motivating to me. Yeah. I guess I was sitting there. I had the radio right in front of me, and I was sitting at a table. And I was doing my homework and everything, and it's just blasting at me. Like, okay, I can get into this. Pat Benatar's on loop. Five but I was also three. into you know 80s hairband band rock. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go from Pat Benatar to 80s hairband band rock. You got like White Snake, and then you're like, okay. Oh yeah. Yes. White Snake, Motley Crue. That, that's another. Totally you love Motley Crue. I do. That's a whole different story in its own. <laughs> oh man. One of your idols should be the. What is, is it? Um, Tommy Def Lee. Leppard. Oh. One arm drummer. Oh yeah. He was one of the best out Does there. Does anyone know his name? I forget. <laughs> Other than calling him the one arm drum drummer. The amazing single arm drummer, I should say. Yeah. It was. It really was amazing what he done with his drum set. How? I mean, he set like foot controls up for his for his like rack toms, and it's it's amazing what that how that guy does it. I mean, yeah. it really is. I, it's hard enough to keep four different beats, with you, you know, with your four limbs. I couldn't imagine trying to keep like eight and sixteen and thirty-two. It's it's amazing what I can do. I couldn't even do one beat. At a time. <laughs> I keep time with this, just like t -t 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 -t. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Going off the rails here. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, we're... <laughs> don't make her spit her coffee out. You don't switch seats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a, a bath of coffee. No, no. coffee bath. No, sometimes. So I'm sure you guys want to get out and do other cities, or play other cities, I shouldn't say do, because that's bad. But you want to be out and playing other cities and doing all sorts of stuff, maybe even in Nashville. Everybody wants to go to Nashville. And as we were talking about, people from Nashville want to come over this way. Yeah. <laughs> so we could trade shows, maybe. Yeah, we could just swap with people. Just yeah. like, you hand me some contacts, and I'll hand you some contacts, and we'll just... 
Well, that's the way it's got to work. I mean, yeah, keep you guys, There's I mean, got to be a support system in the yeah. scene. I mean, we've got a pretty good support system here because, I mean, obviously doing this show, we we meet a lot of bands, and yeah. every person we talk to on this stage at the open chord, my All new shirt. Music. Yes. Check out the music store in the back whenever you come in. But anyway. Plug. Uh, yes. <laughs> Shameless plug. Well, we have to. I mean, they've been great to let us do all these shows. Yeah. But anyway, going back to the bands, every band that we have talking to appear on the stage, they just want to support everybody else. Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, they're even talking about other bands while they're up on stage with us. They're like, yeah, this, this band here, we played with them last week or last month or whatever. They're great. You guys got to check them out. Yeah, it's weird because, like, like when I tried, when I started like doing this, I was afraid that there'd be like a really big like heavy competitiveness. But no, everyone's just like so chill with each other. <laughs> so that's a big. That was like a big relief really? when it came to trying to actually book shows. When you're welcomed into the scene with open arms, it's just great. Me not being a musician at all. I mean, the first time I came into this scene was 2014. Mm. So I just showed up at a show one night, and they're like, "Yeah, come on in. It's great." We're glad to see you here. <laughs> That's okay, <awesome>. cool. <laughs> and me being very shy and usually um, kind of inverted, mm -hmm. I don't talk to people. So yeah. I was sitting at the table just like with my head down listening to the music. And then I get into the music and I'm like, yes, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. Like, yeah, everybody here, everyone like, especially in like the Knoxville music scene, they're all just like so chill and welcoming. And they just like, they, they're just happy that there's music around. Yeah which is the coolest part about it. So do you guys have any aspirations of like playing out? What's your, what's your goal? What's our goal? What's our goal? <laughs> Reaching out a little further, you know. Baby steps, then work your way up. I mean like, a lot of music. We, yeah, just keep playing. And I mean like we've been getting a lot, like we've got a lot of stuff booked coming up in Lexington and- um, July and August will be. Yeah. And Asheville and we're just, I mean, right now we're just seeing how far this takes us, and we're just having fun when we do it. Living it day by day, and they, exactly. They're having fun. That's when I got in with them. That's what I told them. I was like, I'm not in this to make money or anything. I do it because I love it, and that's. I guess that's my goal. Anyway, it's just playing yeah. because I enjoy doing it. That's another common theme with bands that we have up here. They just want to have fun, yeah. and they want to connect with their audience. So the more fun that the audience is having the more fun that people are on the stage are having, mm -hmm. or vice versa. You've got to have fun on the stage in order to get the crowd involved yeah. and kind of bring them up. Yeah. Come on up to the stage. You've got to rock out. Yeah. It's a very symbiotic. You know, with most musicians that we've talked to, they, they feed off the crowd. Yeah. You know, oh, it, yeah. It is. You, you definitely Yeah, if you've got a bad the crowd, then it's like... <laughs> Which I have seen a lot of shows like that where, you know, with maybe the opening act or whatever, and they go up. There's people still standing way in the back, you know, eating a burrito or a piece of pizza. <laughs> right. Just, or just get to the front of the stage. Or just get up there. You paid to watch a show and you're standing back there eating something. Are they sitting here at the front tables doing this? Yeah. Why, why have you got your phone on stage? Because I was trying to make a point. Okay. <laughs> the crowd, the crowd is a big help, though. I mean, props. we do. Props. 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 Gotta give me props for that. There's props a, props props. nothing yeah. more quiet than a room full of people that don't react to a song stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually when no. I take my kick drum and just hit yeah. as hard as I can. Yeah. <laughs> then you're like, oh, oh, yeah. Get involved. That's kind of when you go to an unfamiliar venue and none of them have ever heard you before. Yes. You yeah. kind of want to project yourself out there mm -hmm. so they hear it and connect and then come up to the stage. Be so loud and proud and be heard. <laughs> kind, of, kind of motto. <laughs> you got to do that. Like it. Do what? I said, you got to do that. You got to be loud and proud yeah. with your guitar, or your drums, or your vocals. You got that powerful voice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that a God given gift, or I mean, did you take lessons? I guess it was God given. I don't want to say that. But <laughs> oh. Oh, well, you grew up with it. Yeah, yeah you, I did. You started singing at a young age, right? I didn't know I could sing until. Um, about oh, like 14. I was because I started playing when I was nine, and then I just start started screwing with it or whatever. And my dad like bust through the door, and he's like, "How long have you been able to do that?" <laughs> and I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> now, <laughs> and just like, and then 
he and my mom kind of like just pushed me to like, because I was really shy too. Like you, I was like very introverted. I didn't want to talk to anybody. And so they were just like, get out there and do it. So I was just like, okay. Well, <laughs> and then Your dad's like where you got all your music, like inspiration. Yeah, and, like, but your music he can't music. sing. <laughs> no, but that's where you got like your taste for music. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I was just like starting, I was like singing along to the stuff that he had me listen to and then it just happened, I guess. That's really cool. That is cool. And you started singing and it kind of built from there. Yes, yeah, I, would, I would sing at like talent shows and stuff. I, would, I wasn't comfortable doing it, but. I'm still not comfortable doing this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Notice now, I'm, star I'm looking at you guys and not the camera over there. <laughs> just like give it like the dead eye. Yes. Just like look right at my soul. <laughs> Well, I'll look at it if I want to say, hey, check out these guys on all social medias, on every music uh, outlet out there. <laughs> look for them on a marquee near you. A marquee. Across the nation. Across the nation, yeah. yes. Across the nation. Well, isn't that what they're called? Usually they're marquees, right? Or do you want, you want me to call them venue signs? No, marquee's marquee better. better. It is. Yeah. It sounds a little flashing more lights more and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Look for the flashy <laughs> lights. <laughs> flashy lights. Unless you have epilepsy, don't look at them. Yeah, yeah. no. That's not a good thing. Take your medicine beforehand, <laughs> and then look at them. Yes, remember to take your medicine. We've got to encourage everybody that's watch, watching these to come out and see each individual band that we have up, right now being uh, Lauren and the Howlers. I keep wanting to just say your name. The, the last time I talked to you, I just had to say last your name. Time it was Lauren Don't Beeler. forget the Howlers. We're Don't forget the Howlers. The Howlers. These guys over here, some great individuals. Check them out anywhere you can see them. And we got to close it out, sir. I believe that is it. So thank you again for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. And we will see you next time.